2.5.1, which requires us to explain the role of producers, consumers, and decomposers in the ecosystem. 2.5.3, to describe and explain the transfer and transformation of energy as it flows through ecosystems. And then a group of definitions in 2.5.5 which include gross productivity, net productivity, primary productivity, and secondary productivity. Primary producers. They utilize sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water from the soil to manufacture materials which sustain all life in the ecosystem. These primary producers are also referred to as autotrophs, which literally means self-feeders. Autotrophs are photosynthetic organisms, and they're also referred to as primary producers. The fact that we decide to call autotrophs not just producers, but primary producers, that implies that there could be another kind of producer. And that other kind of producer is visible right here in our picture. The cow. All of these cattle that feed here are very much producers. In fact, we know that they produce milk and beef and butter and cheese. So therefore, in that sense, they are producers. And of course, they are feeding on the primary producers or the autotrophs. They don't make their own food from inorganic materials. They need to feed on something else. So we refer to these cows or anything that feeds on something else to get its nutrients as heterotrophs. And the cows are certainly heterotrophs. But they also produce. They produce for things that may feed on them. And if that thing happens to be a human being or a wolf, then that makes the cow a secondary producer. But in another sense, it makes the cow a primary consumer. So we've got secondary productivity and we've got primary productivity. And the secondary productivity of the cattle on the farm would refer to the increase in biomass or the increase in energy per unit of area per unit of time. And if we deduct it from that gross secondary productivity, the respiration, then we would get the net secondary productivity. Here is a list of definitions from the ESS course guide. And here we can see our definition of primary productivity, secondary productivity, net and gross productivity. And in each case, it's referring to the energy or biomass per unit area, per unit time. And the net, a similar thing, but referring to the loss in respiration. And secondary productivity referring to heterotrophic organisms that feed on autotrophic organisms. Let's take a look at some more things on our field that are relevant to what we may have covered uh, in previous units. And let's consider three terms. And these include parasitism, mutualism, and herbivory. Let's take herbivory. The heterotrophic organism, the cow, feeds on the producers, the primary producers, or the autotrophic organisms, and that makes them herbivores. The cattle egrets, these white birds in the picture, they have a relationship in which they feed on the ticks which live on the surface of the cow. And the cow 
gets the benefit of getting rid of its parasite. And that's our third relationship. A parasite is an organism that lives on or in another organ organism referred to as its host, and it gains benefit from the host while the host suffers some kind of harm, but most likely would not die. How essential is it to have consumers in an ecosystem? Our closed system here right now, and of course it's referred to as a closed system, because the only significant input from the outside is light and there's no exchange of matter and in our closed system here we only have producers and the system has been sustaining itself for over three months without any interference from the outside how then can this happen what exactly is the role do consumers have an absolutely essential role the simple answer to that of course is no and in this closed system there is no need for consumers because the autotrophic organisms by themselves carry out photosynthesis which produces oxygen and the output of oxygen from photosynthesis becomes the input of oxygen in respiration and then respiration in turn has the output of carbon dioxide which is the input for photosynthesis so there's some cycling going on in here and of course the carbon cycle will be considered in the next lesson but with this cycling of carbon dioxide and oxygen in and out it means that autotrophic organisms can very much sustain themselves without having any consumers but there is another component that's absolutely essential let's take a look and here we can see the component that's absolutely essential and that component is the decomposer for what would happen eventually to all of the dead organic matter that would collect over time you need to have something in there that deals with all of that organic matter breaks it down and returns the carbon to the air as carbon dioxide and this role is played by the decomposers which include not just ants but a range of organisms which we are about to discuss consumers though even though they are not absolutely essential for sustaining life in an ecosystem have the role of consuming autotrophic organisms and in turn creating a whole lot more diversity and more niches within ecosystems and in the course of the evolutionary process they have come to develop many essential relationships with lots of plants uh, for things like dispersal and pollination for example the key role of the autotrophic organism is to fix energy from the sun and it's really a very small amount of energy that is actually fixed by the autotrophic organisms or the green plants less than 0.1 of a percent but whatever is fixed only approximately 10 percent of that in accordance with our 10 percent rule gets transmitted to the primary consumers and then 10 percent of that gets transmitted to the secondary consumers so there is a lot of transfer transformation and there are, of course storages and flows things that were discussed in the systems and models unit which we need to ensure that we don't forget them so let's make sure that we can list uh, the storages and flows the transfers and transformations but let's move ahead now to have a detailed and here we have uh, our first example a bracket fungus feeding on this decomposing log. This is not a photosynthetic organism. It feeds on the remains of this log, acquiring its nutrients and in so doing, releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that would be trapped in the organic matter of this log. Another example is a range of other types of fungi and bacteria feeding on this decaying fruit. Decomposers are 
absolutely essential for dealing with all of this waste that comes out of the not just the autotrophs of course but heterotrophs like our cow when it urinates one very important organism that we have in the soil perhaps the most important uh, macro organism in the soil is the humble earthworm burrowing into the soil aerating the soil and taking in soil and organic matter and producing nutrient rich pellets like you can see here the feces of the worm very nutrient rich and enriching soils to a large extent recycling organic matter and allowing nutrient rich material to be taken up by plants and now for some final questions for us to consider describe the niche this important niche of an earthworm apart from the recycling of matter outline some ways in which heterotrophs support the existence of autotrophs and our picture here is just to give you an idea as to one way and then finally to outline and you can make reference to our previous lesson where we looked at the inputs and outputs of photosynthesis outline how you could use oxygen and carbon dioxide sensors to estimate the GPP of an area of farmland and also to find the NSP of a mouse.